When it was first introduced in 300 BCE, the Roman denarius boasted a silver content of over 98.5%. Under Caesar, a couple hundred years later, it still contained roughly the same silver content and had become one of the most used and trusted currencies in the world. But later, starting largely under Emperor Nero, who debased the denarius by an additional 7.5%, Hefty tax, sir. Roman emperors could no longer resist the urge to continue debasing. And by 235 ACE, the denarius contained but 63.5% silver content. Six years later, it was down to 48%. And by 274, the Roman denarius no longer contained more than 5% silver. Ciao, Roma. The Middle Age period that followed got its name because it later gave way to the Renaissance, or rebirth. It was a transitional phase between periods of advancement and enlightenment. The collapse of Rome, due to currency debasement and rulers' greed, despite its initial huge progress in art, science, and technology, led to a fragmented world of small barbarian fiefdoms, feudal lords competing for power. Rome's theft and monetary mismanagement led to a prolonged period of pestilence, war, and famine. And it definitely set a stage for a discussion on the role of money in the Middle Ages. In the meantime, people largely reverted to barter. During this time, trade networks that had connected Europe and Africa and Asia basically disintegrated. But over this medieval 900-year period, new economic systems and networks re-emerged and led to the development of a new world economy during the High Middle Ages, thanks to some very resourceful homies in Florence, the de' Medici. But we digress. The first significant factor in the development of a new world economy during this medieval period was the rise of the feudal system. The system was based on a hierarchy of lords and vassals, with each lord providing protection and government to a group of peasants who were literally attached to the land in exchange for labor and tribute, which is medievalese for death and or by taxes. But the feudal system facilitated the development of agriculture and new technologies, such as the heavy plow, which increased agricultural productivity, and indirectly, the raising of armies and their ability to travel longer distances. Another new significant medieval development was the rise of new international networks and a centralization of power by the church. The Mediterranean remained a key trading center, with city-states like Florence, Genoa, and Venice playing an ever significant role in the trade between Africa, Europe, and Asia. But the development of a confederation of northern German city-states called the Hanseatic League also had a hand in this development. And then in the 11th century began the Crusades. These military expeditions initiated by the church led to increased trade and cultural exchange between Europe and the Middle East, facilitating the spread of new technologies such as papermaking, astronomy, medicine, and algebra. These key monetary innovations, these technologies borrowed from the Arabs during the Crusades, not only revolutionized money, commerce, and banking, they became the foundational basis on which the world still operates today. Arabic numerals, the number zero, and double entry bookkeeping to name but a couple. Here are a few examples of some of the wildest technologies to emerge during this dark medieval period. Tally sticks, literally wooden receipts notched and split between debtor and creditor. They were popularized in medieval England as currency under King Henry I. Guilds, associations of merchants and artisans that regulated trade, commercial contracts, and dispute resolution. The number zero and double entry bookkeeping. An accounting system for merchants that facilitated more accurate bookkeeping, financial tracking, and fraud prevention. It's kind of useful when you no longer have to use Roman numerals. And since no one really trusted the leftover denarius, Roman currencies that were in circulation, and people tended to hoard the good money from other parts of the world, there was a huge shortage of coins. So feudal lords resorted to minting their own commodity monies made of precious metals in order to stimulate trade and commerce in their regions. But one didn't necessarily want to lug around gold and silver on their person in medieval Europe, if you understand my drift. So two more very important technologies emerged to solve this problem. Fractional reserve banking. When goldsmiths started storing their clients' coins in their own vaults as a service, they quickly realized that rarely did all of their clients ask for all of their coins to be redeemed all at the same time. So they started holding only a fraction of the deposits and lending out the rest. You put that coin back, goldsmith. Put it back. It's not your coin. It's not your coin, goldsmith. Put that, goldsmith. 
put that coin back in your vault. Put it back. Bills of exchange emerged in medieval Italy, allowing merchants to transfer funds across long distances without physically having to carry the gold or the silver or the bullion or what have you. These, like promissory notes and other forms of deferred settlement, like bearer notes, would pop up where goldsmiths, bankers, and merchants could trade them. These were the first money markets. All of a sudden, they allowed international commerce to truly flourish. Without the fear of one's gold ending up at the bottom of the ocean after a bad, unlucky storm, or worse, in the bloody hands of a buccaneer or pirate. These are just a few examples of the many monetary technologies that emerged in Europe as a result of the collapse of Rome. Trade very slowly began to flourish again, and as routes expanded and merchants traveled further afield, the need for a more reliable and robust currency system quickly became apparent. To meet these needs, banks started to appear in cities like Florence and Venice. Next month on Beads to Bitcoin, A History of Money, we enter the gilded golden age of banking. And it's no coincidence that what followed would become a period of artistic, intellectual, and scientific advancement that would make the Roman Empire look like kindergarten. Renaissance and the rise of the de' Medici. Start your free account at endax.io today.